All righty. Thank you so much for being here. There we go. It's time for live chat. Ooh, psyche truth. Live chat. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time on your YouTube machine. Live chat, live chat, live chat, live chat. It's the Psyche Truth. Live chat, live chat. The Psyche Truth. Live chat. With Mira Hoffman. Hey guys. I am so thrilled to have the lovely Mira back on the live chat. It's been a hot minute, huh? Yeah, it's been a little while. A long while. I think since the fall. Yeah. <laughs> Time sure flies, so I guess this is maybe your first live chat of the of the new year. Crazy how time flies, isn't it, folks? <laughs> uh, so we want to thank all of you guys for being here. You want to pull in a little bit and kind of get comfy. All right, here we go. Um, let me get us centered there. Awesomeness. Cool. So we already have <laughs> tons of good questions on the Facebook and here in the chat. Uh, so I'm going to just quickly touch on um, a couple of these questions in the chat and then we'll run over to the Facebook and then by then it'll just be question insanity <laughs> of awesomeness. Uh, a little later on, we're going to announce the winner of the raw chocolate giveaway. Ooh. So <laughs> be sure to stick around in the live chat. And um, yeah, hopefully we can answer as many questions as possible. Uh, Stephen Jones started us off with a really good question. What do you think about all these new commercials saying that corn syrup comes from a natural plant and can be part of a healthy diet. Now, I don't have a television, so I have not seen uh, the advertisements about which you're uh, speaking here, but I do remember seeing ads about corn syrup uh, back in the days when I did have television. So a couple of things. If you watch those commercials till the very end, chances are in very small print, uh, it will actually say that those commercials are paid for by the Corn Refiners Association of America or some kind of company that has a financial incentive for you to think that corn syrup is a healthy thing to eat. And, uh, you know, another one of the things I said in my video, this is kind of an older video comparing whole and processed foods, is that most of the time things that have advertisements are gonna be processed foods because organic farmers, you know, don't really have the money to advertise things. So just the number, you know, just uh, the, the first red flag would be that there's a commercial for it. Because most of the time, the people who have money for commercials are people who are prioritizing their profit over your health. Uh, so that would kind of be the first thing. And then second of all, like I said, chances are it's the Corn Refiners Association of America or some kind of company or group similar to that who's actually paying for these commercials. Uh, so no, while corn syrup is taken from corn, it's corn itself that is natural and healthy, not things that come from corn. So we talk about, you know, trying to eat minimally processed foods and stay away from really highly processed foods. So taking a piece of corn and turning it into a really sweet syrup that's actually like 200 times sweeter than sugar, uh, that's a lot of processing that goes in there. So there's nothing healthy about corn syrup. Your healthiest sweeteners are going to be minimally processed things like maple syrup or honey or just eating a whole piece of fruit. And then again, you just wanna make sure that you look at your ingredient labels and make sure you're not eating something that actually has corn syrup in it. Um, something with just one ingredient or maybe no ingredient label at all. Uh, and then it, I heard this uh, Stephen Jones again, I heard that drinking warm water with lemon when you first wake up is really good for you. Uh, I don't necessarily know if it has to be warm, but in general, thing, you know, your body has to heat up everything you eat to the internal temperature of your body. So warm water can be better for us than really icy cold water. And yeah, lemon is a great alkalizing, detoxifying, 
uh, thing to, to add into your diet. So yeah, having it first thing in the morning can be a really good way to kind of get your metabolism, uh, you know, kind of in check, start you out alkalized, start you out detoxifying. Uh, I pretty much do either lemon water in the morning or apple cider vinegar water in the morning. Uh, let's see. Do you have any comments on either of those, Mira? Yeah, I would just remind everyone that corn and soy are, are some of the most um, GMO, genetically modified mm -hmm. um, plants out there. So when you're getting that corn syrup, which again has been just really refined, you're not starting with a good product to begin with. So get organic corn, eat it, avoid products that are super processed. I mean, it's really basic. I know it seems complicated because you have all these advertisements from all these different sources and yeah, it tastes really good, but it tastes good because we're a nation addicted to sugar. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you try and change your diet, try and not listen to every all the propaganda out there trying mm -hmm. to get you to basically basically buy their products and make them more money. Exactly. Exactly. Then Stephen kind of added on here that they were talking about that regular corn syrup is better for you than high fructose corn syrup. Uh, maybe high fructose corn syrup is worse. It's actually more sugar in it. Uh, but even just regular corn syrup, also not good for you. Again, it's probably genetically modified. It's definitely highly processed. Uh, and then just the mere fact that, you know, it is a lot of glucose. It's a lot of sugar. So it's going to spike up your blood sugar. It's going to cause weight gain. It's going to potentially cause insulin resistance and diabetes. So, you know, the best way to satisfy your sweet tooth is eating a whole piece of fruit because you get fiber, you get vitamins, you get minerals. It's actually going to curb your hunger. And uh, it's the best you know, natural form of sugar that there is really. So thank you for your question, Stephen. I'm gonna hop over to the Facebook real quick before we delve into the rest of this madness here. Um, so Laura Schmidt says, uh, so this is a question about apple cider vinegar. Uh, she's just asking, um, you know, it can too much of it damage your kidneys? Can it be bad? How much do I need to use, uh, et cetera. So I did a little bit of additional research on apple cider vinegar, and there were a couple of things uh, listed that it can potentially uh, interact with diabetes medications and, and, and different pharmaceutical drugs. So if you're taking pharmaceuticals of some kind, you maybe want to talk to your doctor before you start doing apple cider vinegar. Now I think a small amount, uh, like a teaspoon or, or, or two per day, is probably not going to hurt you. Um, but some of these protocols with apple cider vinegar call for kind of much more significant amounts. And before you start taking a significant amount or taking it in capsule form every day, maybe you want to talk to your doctor if you're on pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, it can be a little damaging to the teeth and stuff because it is acidic. So even though it's alkalizing to the body, it actually contains acetic acid. So it can damage your teeth if you have too much of it straight. Um, it can uh, cause irritation for some people. I read irritation of the throat, but again, I think that just comes from maybe not diluting it enough. You wanna add it to some water. And in terms of how much, I always just tell people to, you know, do it to taste. You don't want it to be so strong that it's really doesn't taste good or else you're not gonna keep drinking it. Um, but in general, I mean, I try to kind of add as much as I can until I just can't take it anymore. Um, it'll kind of go from being really pleasant amount and really pleasant taste to maybe too too much. And you can always just add more water at that point. So in terms of damaging kidneys, I didn't really see anything to that effect. I would imagine that if you were drinking huge amounts of it every single day for an extended period of time, it could have negative uh, effects that way. But really the only precautions I saw were if people are taking pharmaceutical drugs or if they already are uh, very diabetic, they already have really significant blood sugar metabolism issues, then, uh, you know, maybe they want to talk to their doctor before they start with the apple cider vinegar. Alrighty, so and then, so that was Laura Schmidt. This is uh, Scott Poledna. I'm working on changing my diet from an SAD to a vegan diet, and I had a question about a few items. So the first one is TVP. Uh, this is short for textured vegetable protein. And honestly, I would say, you know what, that's a highly processed product. 
You have no idea what vegetables they're using in it because they're not really telling you. And as far as what it is to make something textured, I, you know, I don't know. So that would be a highly processed food and something that I would avoid. If you're looking for a meat replacement, the best one is tempeh. And tempeh is actually a fermented tofu product. Do you eat tempeh? I've, I've eaten it before. Yeah? yeah? Do you like it? I don't eat it that much, but you can okay. season it up and make it delicious. Yeah, because the cool thing about tempeh or something like that, it doesn't really have very much taste in itself. So once you chop it up and mix it with veggies or soy sauce or something like that, um, a lot like the textured vegetable protein. It's kind of going to lend itself to whatever you cook it with. So it makes it very uh, effective. But tempeh is going to offer you a whole, whole lot of health benefits. Uh, lots of fiber, lots of protein, which is what we're looking for in a meat replacement. So uh, the next one is about liquid smoke for flavoring. I see that all the time. And you just kind of have to ask, what, how, I... So, <laughs> uh, the other thing to realize is that, you know, when they put something like liquid smoke, I mean, that's actually a chemical, and they're just not telling you what the chemical name is. Same thing with, like, yellow number five or natural flavors. Those are just euphemisms for some really long chemical name. Like, the chemical name for yellow five, uh, shortened, is tartrazine, but elongated, it's like... It's, it's ridiculous, and if you watched my little Food Chemicals the Musical video, I actually included the whole name of it. You can see it on there. So anyways, just realize that when it says something like liquid smoke, well, there's some chemical um, that's actually being used, and they're just using the name liquid smoke. So this is something that I uh, would avoid as much as possible. Uh, Veganaise actually I think is, is, is a is pretty good product. Uh, and so he says, what do you think about veganaise in making salads like macaroni salad or carrot raisin salad? Uh, veganaise looks like a pretty good product. It's also really easy to make your own mayonnaise um, as well. And just realize that, you know, one of the main ingredients in mayonnaise is vinegar. So that flavor of the apple cider vinegar that we're talking about is part of what makes ketchup taste so good and makes mayonnaise taste so good. So a lot of times you can maybe skip the processed who knows what it is anyway um, and just flavor things with things like apple cider vinegar or something like that. So really good question, Scott. Uh, and then Laura has another question. This one is for Mira. So she says, I like the health benefits of yoga, but I'm a little put off by the association of yoga with Hinduism. Uh, would you say yoga is a lot like Pilates? What are the differences? What benefits would I miss if I just did Pilates? So that's a great question, Laura. Um, so first off, yes, yoga definitely is um, a practice that has been uh, originated out of India. It's closely tied with Hinduism, but what I find is most practitioners and most instructors uh, here in the West, they aren't teaching. There's not a lot of dogma about Hinduism in the classes. They don't oversell or try and, you know, there's no sort of conversion or anything like that. So typically in my classes, we start off, we ohm together. I don't feel like oming is any sort of direct tie or strong ties to Hinduism, but you know, it does kind of help center your energy. And then the thing that I found is I have done some Pilates. I don't teach it. I haven't studied it thoroughly, but Pilates for me was just based on my physical body. So we are working out, we're doing really intense uh, repetitions. It's more like going to a gym and going to a workout. If that's what you like and that's what works for you, great. I think having physical activity in your daily life is so important. So do whatever works for you. For me, I like yoga because not only am I working my body, but then there's the coaxing and coaching of getting your mind to relax and getting your mind to really come into the present moment. So when I'm you know, doing a forward bend, I'm inhaling deeply. And then I'm exhaling and noticing how my body moves, just even these little tiny mm -hmm. micro movements. And I feel like we are so disconnected from our bodies. Everything that we do during our day is like mental energy in a lot of ways. So we're at the computer, we're talking on the phone. And then you realize I haven't even stood up and like walked around the room mm -hmm. in four to six hours sometimes. So for me, that component of really getting the mind to reconnect with the body 
and having that be a part of the practice is really essential. So yes, there is a spiritual component to yoga, but I don't feel like it's really um, sold as like a religious practice here in the West. So mm -hmm. I think if you were to find a, an instructor or try out a few different classes and see mm -hmm. if there's one that you really like and, and gravitate towards and that meets your needs as far as not having it, you know, being too dogmatic about the religion. Yeah, we actually just um, filmed yesterday with a very new, brand new yoga teacher, and her name is Erica, uh, but she really doesn't really incorporate much of a spiritual aspect into her yoga, you know, really at all. So she I means she's focusing on the breath and connecting with her body, um, but if it's that, you know, maybe kind of spiritual aspect that, you know, maybe you're, you don't really like or you don't or whatever, um, Mira makes a great point that every yoga teacher is going to be different. So... You know, you can definitely find somebody who either is really spiritual, if that's what you want, or maybe who isn't so much and who's really just focusing on the fitness aspect of it. And then the other part of your question, um, what are the differences between yoga and Pilates? What benefits would I miss if I just did Pilates? So I think really just what I was speaking to you before is, um, you know, I think the benefit of really harnessing the mind and getting to it to come into the present moment is one of the greatest benefits along with the physical benefits of yoga. So Pilates and yoga, you're both getting a physical workout, but then yoga really does emphasize kind of connecting with the moment and connecting with your body and really paying attention to what you're doing so um, that would be the main thing that I would say that you're missing out plus you get normally a nice resting um, period at the mm -hmm. end of class called Shavasana so that's when you lay down into corpse pose and I feel like this is a great way to kind of integrate the practice integrate what you've just done with your body and let your body really absorb um, all those different postures that you've done, everything that you've moved it through. It's almost like taking that time to reflect on what you've just done. And I feel like that pause is something that we don't make space for in our lives a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's one of the things that I really cherish about doing yoga. But excellent questions. Thank you for asking. Yeah, definitely, Laura. Thank you so much. Um, as always, guys, if there's a topic that you would like us to continue on or expand on, you can just leave that in the questions over here. We will be getting to those in just a second. So Greg Gibson has a really good question. My doctor is pushing for gastric sleeve surgery, which I guess is gastric bypass. Uh, what are your feelings? I'm 346 pounds. I'm recently starting a more pl plant-based diet. Uh, what's your advice? So gastric surgery or really surgery of any kind should really always be kind of a last resort. You know, like you have exhausted all of the other potential options and then you go, you know, and then when nothing else has worked, maybe you're gonna go this route. One way to think of it, we were kind of actually joking earlier in the room, is like why in modern medicine do they always wanna start with the most invasive and potentially harmful thing. You know, they wanna start you on drugs and start you with surgery uh, rather than, you know, maybe, like I just said, exhausting all of the other options until you really know that, okay, I'm left with no other choice. So I would just encourage you, um, I have had several, several people message me or email me uh, that they have lost a hundred pounds just watching my videos, um, all kinds of different weight loss journeys and transformations um, of people that, you know, are just, have just as much weight to lose. So I just encourage you, stick with your dietary changes. It sounds like you're moving to a more plant-based diet, eating more vegetables. That's a great step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would just keep on with that and incorporating little bits of movement, even if you just start with something like standing up at your desk every 10 minutes and sitting back down, and that's all you do. Even if you just start really small, incorporating more movement, just lifting your arms up over your head, for instance, um, all those little things will add up and, and, and you can lose the weight. Getting off of the refined sugar, refined carbohydrates, and getting onto a good healthy diet that will actually satisfy your hunger, I think is really the key. So we live in this you know, world now where everything is reduced fat or non-fat or no fat, so no one can ever get full. 
So we're walking around with, you know, people that they just can't satisfy their hunger. They're always hungry. Um, and people with, with weight issues like this will usually say, oh yeah, I feel hungry all the time. Mm -hmm. So figuring out how to satisfy your hunger is really the main thing. So eating healthy fats like avocados and nuts and coconut oil and staying away from the refined sugar and the refined carbohydrates is a really good step in the right direction. So Craig, I just encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. It sounds like you are on the right track. Um, and you know, if, if, if it doesn't work for you, I mean, I offer one-on-one -on -one, like personal health coaching for people to help them bust through their barriers and figure out how to get these new healthy life changes to work for them. So, I mean, there's so much out there to help you avoid having to go the surgery route. So I just encourage you to keep looking at those different resources. Uh, it looks like you're headed in a really good direction. Yeah, I would just add that I think, you know, yes, you're on the right track and surgery for me and for everyone that I've seen, because I treat a lot of clients that have had surgery for their backs that are still in pain or, you know, mm. still struggling with whatever the original issue was, is that it needs to be last resort and talk to your doctor and tell him like, this is my plan. You know, I'm changing my diet. I'm going to mm -hmm. start getting regular exercise. You start slow, make it so you get those little positive feedback rewards where it's like, okay, today I stood up and stretched a little bit, or I stood up and I walked around the room before I sat back down. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like, oh, that's nothing. What's it going to do? But actually that does make a huge, huge difference. So I think that adding, you know, slowly increasing the level of exercise that you're getting is going to help a lot. And yeah, I would just communicate with your doctor and say, here, this is my plan. This is what I want to do. And let's move forward with this plan. And if this isn't working, then we can revisit, you know, the plan for surgery. We don't know a lot of other details about what's going on with you. So right. hopefully there's not, you know, some significant um, complications or something that else that you're dealing with. But if it's really just about the weight, then I would say you're on the right track. Keep on going. You know, don't mm -hmm. stop. <laughs> One cool thing that um, really kind of helped shift my perception of, of weight loss and trying to lose weight uh, was a discussion that Dr. Balanzi did, and I think it's called Weight Loss Industry Lies or Weight Loss Lies. It's a mm. Truth Talk interview, and he explains that when the body is functioning the way it's supposed to and the body is functioning properly and has all the things that it needs, the body doesn't want to hold on to extra weight. So if we have a problem where we've accumulated a lot of extra weight, this is an indication just in and of itself, obesity in itself is an indication that functionality is, is being inhibited or is, is being messed with some way. For, and for whatever reason, the body's not functioning the way it's supposed to. Because when it is, it's gonna just drop all that weight. It's not going to become obese. So detoxification is a big thing. If your body is holding on to all this fat, you have significant toxicity building as well. And if your body can't detox out the chemicals and the bad stuff so it can metabolize that fat, that can be one really big underlying issue to, to losing weight, especially significant amounts of weight. So it doesn't have to be a big expensive detox or a big crazy cleanse or you have to fast. Just little things like mm -hmm. cutting down on the sugar, drinking more water, eating more vegetables. I mean, those are three really simple tips to help your body start detoxing. And then when we talk about movement and stuff, just breaking a sweat helps you detox. Mm -hmm. So even if you just went and sat um, in a sauna for five minutes or something like that and start breaking a sweat or in Texas, go sit outside, uh, <laughs> just even if you're just sitting there sweating, that's gonna help your body start to detox. Of course, if you ever do any kind of intense sweating like that, you need to drink a lot of water. I would recommend coconut water so you get some electrolytes in there too. Uh, but those can be some really good simple ways to help your body kind of burst through that barrier that's keeping all of that extra weight on you. Uh, and just know that once your body starts getting healthy and you start restoring function, all that weight's just gonna drop off. It's gonna be a side effect of your body getting healthier and more functional. 
The other thought that I had, because I know sometimes it's hard when you start changing your lifestyles and, and patterns, is a quick small thing that you can do is every time that you go to the store, park at the back of the mm-hmm, parking lot mm-hmm. and make yourself walk that extra whatever, 20 or 30 steps. It's really not that much. It doesn't take that much time, but there you've added a little bit of distance exactly. into your exercise program, and it really does work. So Exactly. And that's a great tip, too. And how often are we parking and we drive? drive around the parking lot looking for the <laughs> closest spot just park in the one that's farthest away and and do that little bit of extra walking and um you know that's a great tip again things like taking the stairs instead of the elevator uh even just standing up while you watch tv instead of sitting down while you watch tv are really great simple things I used to tell myself that every time I was going to watch a show, because I have a couple shows that I like to watch on Netflix, that I'd have to do like 30 sit-ups while I was watching it. Yeah, or, I did the same thing. Or get on the thing. treadmill or something like that. So little small things that you can kind of spice up what you're doing when you would normally not be having much physical activity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, finding ways to cheat to get your physical activity is, is really big. You know, I actually just ordered um, an exercise ball, and so I'm going to start mm-hmm. sitting on the exercise ball uh, and I actually went to a website and they said well you don't want to just exclusively sit on the exercise ball work your way up in 20 minute increments Mm -hmm. um, and always you know go go back to the chair so that your your muscles can rest in between Uh, but there's a really simple way that I was like okay I'm sitting in this chair all day in the office what can I do Uh, replace it with an exercise ball Mm -hmm. and then you're engaging your core while you're sitting on it so Again, that's a good little, like, maybe sneaky way (laughs) trying to (laughs) incorporate a little bit more physical activity into, you know, what is really a pretty sedentary life for me. I spend a lot of time working at the computer. All right, so let's get back to these questions here. Uh, Just, there's just two more questions on the Facebook. So Marco Devano says... Uh, I'm curious, can food companies lie about their ingredients on the ingredient list? Is that a possible scenario since people are becoming more health conscious? Yes, 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 a hundred times yes. Here's all the ways that food companies can lie on their ingredient label. Uh, Using names for things that, that are very ominous and confusing, like natural flavors. What does that mean? Where did it come from? What is it made out of? How did you get it? Okay. Uh, One of the uh, famous natural flavors that I talk about a lot is castoreum, which is the beaver uh, castor gland juice. So there's these little glands in the butt of the beaver, and they actually take this chemical out of the glands in the beaver butt and use it for natural vanilla and raspberry flavoring. Well, you could ask, what's natural about that? Well, they argue that since it comes from an animal, it's natural. But any of us can sit here and be like, hey, is it natural to flavor something with like beaver butt anal gland juice? (laughs) No, it's not. That's not natural. (laughs) So number one is just using names uh, on the label like natural flavoring or smoke flavor, liquid smoke, like Mm -hmm. I saw earlier, right? Um, And then also they know that most people don't know what these things are. So acesulfame potassium or acesulfame K. Chances are you don't know what that is unless you've been coming to my live chat. Uh, It's an artificial sweetener, just like aspartame. So people know about aspartame and they'll look on the ingredient label and make sure there's no aspartame. But if they don't know that, oh, acesulfame potassium is just another name for the same thing, look, they just pulled one over on you. Mm -hmm. Another thing is to consider that on the ingredient label, they don't have to list processing methods. Okay, so they don't have to tell you anything about how the chemical was processed or the food was processed. And probably the greatest example here is the pink slime. Have you heard of pink slime? Is this the McDonald's thing? It's the McDonald's thing. So, and it's not just McDonald's, it's all ground beef everywhere. So basically, they take uh, a bunch of the tallow and the unedible parts of the meat that they normally just have to process and actually turn into dog food, which is another reason not to feed your pets conventional dog and cat foods. Um, They take all of this inedible scrap, they process it with ammonia, and they can put it in ground beef, they can put it in the butcher's ground beef, so even if you go to the butcher and get ground beef, you really need to ask them, hey, is it 100% ground beef? Because they don't have to tell you, and it's because they consider that a processing method and not an ingredient. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another thing, you know, they can put on the front of the label, no trans fats. 
Well, if you see the words partially hydrogenated oils on the label, those are trans fats. So, I mean, there are tons of ways that they can lie to us on ingredient labels and lie to us on food labels. And that's why the very healthiest, easiest, most simple health advice you could ever give someone is just eat foods that don't have an ingredient list. They come out of the produce section or they come out of the bulk bin and it's just some quinoa or some brown rice or whatever. No ingredient list at all. Uh, that's probably like by far the simplest thing to do. And, and then the other tip I give is looking for a short ingredient list. Looking for an ingredient list where each of the things on it is something you can imagine a picture of what it is, you know? Sesame oil, okay, you can imagine what that is. Peanuts, you can imagine what that is. Uh, Acesulfame potassium, you can't imagine what that is. Uh, so those are some good little tips right there. Uh, Marco's second question is, uh, I have a family that can't give up eating white bread every day. Do you have any tricks up your sleeves? Um, you know, the trick would just be switching it out for stuff. So switching it out for brown rice or for quinoa or for something like that. Um, maybe the sprouted, um, like sprouted Ezekiel breads might be good. So then you still have your bread. Uh, but I think, you know, if you can find a good whole grain, it's always going to be better. Uh, you know, the most effective way to get them off it might be to help them understand how horrible it is for them. <laughs> and um, so you can check out our videos for that, hopefully. Uh, guys, if you here in the chat room have any tips on this question, please leave them. And now we have exhausted our Facebook questions. We're going to come over to the chat. Uh, John had a question, actually, about yoga, the health benefits of yoga. Oh! Yeah, I was I'm reading ahead in the list. Okay, good, good. Well, we <laughs> caught it. Okay, so you can get John's question. I think it was also Jonathan's birthday yesterday. So happy birthday to you, Jonathan. Yeah, happy Mira's birthday. gonna answer your question. <laughs> so um, yoga is really wonderful because it just has such a wide myriad of different health benefits. Um, I found for me personally, uh, you know, besides the physical benefits of being more in shape and better flexibility. Um, my breathing and respiration has has improved so here in austin we are notorious for having some of the worst allergies ever it's true it's pretty intense if it's not cedar then it's oak or mold or i don't know any of the million of other things <laughs> <laughs> so um in the style of yoga that i practice which is shivananda yoga we have we emphasize and start every class with pranayama so that's prana stands for life force it's basically breathing you know breath work that you do and um kapala bhati was like the forced exhalation so it's these small little pumping so if you've never done yoga before this is kind of what it looks like it's just so you're just really just forcing the air out of the lungs, letting the inhale happen naturally. But what that happens over time is you're strengthening all the little tiny muscles that help with rep respiration and you're cleansing the lungs. So sometimes, you know, we don't really take nice deep breaths. We don't really expand the lungs and really use the full capacity of them. So I found that when I was doing yoga regularly that my allergies went away, which was great. I didn't have to take allergy medicine. Awesome. Wasn't sneezing all the time, which is hard and embarrassing when you're trying to teach yoga and or do a massage. Um, I'm trying to think of some more like specific health benefits. So peace of mind, decreased stress and anxiety. Everyone has that. Um, I felt like I was more present and able to handle um, a lot of different demands. So when I was working full time in my office job, I had trouble managing, you know, sort of just different cues. It was like I could prioritize one thing and really want to dive into it. But then it's like this person's asking me for this thing. And, you know, my boss is telling me about this. And then my coworker is asking me, oh, where's this report? You know, it's just kind of like your brain wants to fry and, and mm -hmm. bust a fuse kind of thing because there's so many different things going on. You're like, well, if you could all look at the picture of what I'm trying to deal with right now, it's impossible for me to make all these things happen. But it's like it kind of just resets you. So I felt like that was really a wonderful benefit that I've experienced and that I've seen, you know, many of my students experience as well. They kind of come out of class in this blissful bubble of relaxation and mm -hmm. eyes wide and just being like, wow, I had no idea that I could feel this relaxed from a practice that isn't sleeping or right. drinking and checking out, you know, kind of thing. Right. So um, that's a really wonderful benefit of yoga. 
And then a lot of the poses or asanas is another word for it. That's the word that we were taught in yoga. Um, they focus on different organs. So when you're laying on your abdomen, coming into bow pose, you are pressing all the weight into your abdomen. And what that ha helps do is it helps stimulate the digestive organs. It helps you have more regular movements. It helps the enzymes break down food. So there's just, I could go through each organ and just say, okay, your heart is benefiting because you're getting some regular exercise and you're mm -hmm. pushing it to reach that target heart rate. And then you're also taking these nice deep breaths. We already talked about the lungs and um, and then the physical muscles. So yoga is really a very well-rounded um, activity to do that can help you, you know, both on the physical level and on the mental level. Mm -hmm. If you're tuned into the spiritual stuff and that interests you, I say yes, you know, it's all three together. So great question. Yeah. And I would just throw on there, you know, from my own personal experience that like improved focus has kind of been a side effect because you know, like you were kind of mentioning earlier, Mira, that like we live, we're always like disconnected and we're rushing around and we live in our heads a lot. And once you start this kind of like integrating your breath with your movements and then really like focusing on them, I found that I was like better able to focus on things mm -hmm. and concentrate on things and definitely better to, you know, easier to handle stress. And if I haven't been doing yoga, then I, <laughs> I, get, I get stressed out more easily. Um, but yeah, for me, I just feel like it's all of these like double whammies where, okay, like here's my workout, I can get my heart rate up, I'm building strength. Like one of the other cool things is that since all of the poses kind of progress, you know, um, you really, you know, it kind of is your little marker to see how you're getting stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's things that, you know, a year ago I couldn't do. And that's a really cool feeling in and of itself as well. So man, there are tons and tons of benefits of yoga. Again, you know, we've got a lot of videos on our channel that address that too. So if you want more on that topic, you can check that out. Guys, we are pretty much uh, a little past the halfway point now. Um, and I just wanna throw out there a little shout out for you guys. Number one, click the little thumbs up on this live chat. Because last I looked, there were like, let's see, 11, 72 people <laughs> watching and only 11 likes. So please show us some love, show us some likes. Um, and I wanna invite you guys to join our newsletter. So we have a weekly newsletter that goes out where we include uh, all the videos that we've posted for that week. And then you also get what we call exclusive sneak peeks. So <laughs> before the video goes live on YouTube, we include them in the newsletter. So it's a really cool way to kind of get the behind the scenes, get the sneak peek before it goes live. Um, and it's also a great way to make sure that you never miss a video because you can just kind of scroll through the newsletter, make sure that you saw everything that went up that week um, and uh, you know, have everything just right there at your fingertips. So I love the resource of having, having the newsletter there and it's really easy. It's completely free to sign up. You just go to psychetruth.net uh, and a little gal will pop up there and ask you for your email list. Guys, we just send one email per week. We will not spam you. We will not sell your email to anybody. Uh, this is just to kind of better, you know, be able to connect with you. And, you know, we also were on Google Plus, we're on Facebook. We're really dedicated to making it easy for you guys to interact with us and ask your questions, give us your video requests. Man, y'all have given me a lot of really good ideas. So we've got lots of things in the works based on y'all's video requests. So put us in your Google Plus circle, um, put us, you know, go and like our page on Facebook. And then we all have personal Facebooks as well. So you can actually, you know, friend your favorite Psyche Truth personalities. <laughs> but we just want to encourage you guys to interact with us because part of what makes what we do here so cool is that we really feel like we're providing things that you guys want to watch and that are, you know, kind of speaking to what you're interested in. So the more that you interact with us, it just makes it easier for us to know that, you know, we're making content that y'all actually want to see. Well, and not only that, but think of all the other people out there that aren't, that never been exposed to Psyche Truth that may stumble onto a video or onto a page. And when they see that we have so many supporters, 
it's a no-brainer for them to want to press play and find out more. So yeah. it's a good way for us to reach people that may be wanting and searching for information like this but haven't had the opportunity to kind of get connected in this way. And not only that, but when you're getting that weekly email, then it's like, oh, yeah, today I was going to be good to myself and stand up more at the desk or I'm going to uh-huh. park at the back of the parking lot so I can get those extra 20 or 30 steps. So it's a good way to kind of just create that little loop and reminder in, in your daily life of the things that you wanted to do to help change your your health and wellness. Yeah, definitely. Um, And I would just kind of throw onto that, that, you know, the more that you can, you know, share our videos, you know, on your Google Plus or Facebook or Twitter or whatever, uh, those engagements, not only are you helping to, you know, literally share that information with your friends and your family, um, but it really, really does help us reach more people and help to tell YouTube that people like our videos and that these are good videos that YouTube should be recommending more, putting in the little related video section. Uh, So every little interaction that you make with one of our videos or one of our Facebook posts, especially when you're sharing, that really, you know, signals to YouTube that, hey, this is actually a quality piece of information that's worth, uh, that's worth you know, helping to get more views. So I want to thank all of you guys, because I know a lot of you are already sharing and interacting and friended us on Facebook and everything. So thank you for that. Um, And any of the rest of you who maybe this is your first time in live chat, uh, I just invite you to become a part of the Psyche Truth family, become a Psyche Truth insider. (laughs) And then closing on that little note, we will try to get through as many of these questions here as we can. So, uh, more Davis Donatelli, what are your thoughts on canned soup? Is it healthy or not? So this is really going to depend on which soup it is, right? There's a, a lot of them out there. As a general rule of thumb, most soups, most canned soups uh, are pretty highly processed, pretty high in sodium. Most of them uh, contain monosodium glutamate or MSG, which is literally known to make people overeat. Like if they want to create an obese and diabetic mouse for a laboratory study, they give it MSG. They literally use MSG to create obese diabetic mice. They know that it makes people overeat. Uh, So you really need to read the ingredients. And again, you can just use my little tip, which is looking for a short ingredient list with not a lot of weird chemical names in it. Uh, Just know that most of the soups out there usually have a lot of, of different weird chemicals in them. So it's not to say that every soup will, but you should look at the ingredients and just know that you know, for the most part, most of those soups, especially the Campbell's, I hate to say it, (laughs) but those Campbell's Mm -hmm. soups, the healthy choice, the chunkies, those are not healthy. They're not good. Um, There are some different kind of like healthier soups out there on the market now that really you can turn it over and it's like tomatoes, chicken, peas, you know, you know, actual things again, that you can kind of like think of a picture of what they are. Um, So it's not that every soup is bad, but most of the conventional ones, definitely most of those cheap ones are pretty awful. So the other thing too, is you're thinking about a soup that's sat in a can, which many of them have that plastic lining with Mm -hmm. BPA in it. So that's just leaching into your food as you're waiting, you know, as it sits on the shelf. And a lot of times it's been processed and then you'll get it and it'll sit in your pantry for another six months to a year before you open it up. So yeah, I don't know, stick with the fresh foods as much as possible. Yeah. Another thing that you can do is if you make a big pot of soup and you have a lot left over, get those glass mason jars, put some of the extra soup in there, put it in your freezer Mm -hmm. and then, you know, in a month, get it out. And then you have this nice soup that you know what went into it and it tastes really good and it's nice and healthy. Yeah. And I've even been making my own vegetable broth too, which has been uh, pretty fun and exciting. So I will show that um, one day. (laughs) Um, You know, and when they talk about, you know, for people who are meat eaters, bone broth has a lot of different minerals and health benefits to it. Mm -hmm. And the Weston A. Price... Uh, foundation, people associated with Weston A. Price, man, they go on and on about the health benefits of bone broth. So recognize that soup is a great opportunity to have a very, very healthy thing to eat. My favorite thing about soup is you can just pile the veggies in. Mm-hmm. And because it's soup, you, you know, you can eat a lot of it. So you're just 
eating tons and tons of vegetables with this, which is great. So, um, so don't mistake, soup can be a very super, super healthful, healthful thing. Um, but again, you wanna have one that maybe isn't in an aluminum bisphenol A lined can, uh, one that doesn't have a bunch of chemicals and stuff in it. You know, fresher is always better. And, you know, I love the point that she made about, you know, make a huge pot of soup and freeze some of it. And there you have your own really healthy instant soup available. Okay, and then um, Brian D. is kale the best form of lettuce. So kale uh, is actually in its own family. It's a cruciferous vegetable, but it is a leafy green like lettuce. You know, all of the different leafy greens have different health benefits and vitamins and things that they offer. But a general rule of thumb is that the darker green, the more nutrients. So that real white uh, iceberg lettuce doesn't have a huge amount of nutrients in it. It's, it's mostly water. It still does have some benefits, still has some fiber and stuff. But compared to the kale, Holy moly, things like kale and collard greens, now we're talking lots of protein, lots of nutrients, uh, lots of fiber. So, um, but uh, they all have different ones. So you wanna have a good varied, you know, balance of different ones. So you wouldn't, I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt you if you just always ate kale, but recognize that all the different greens, all the different vegetables have different benefits to offer. So you wanna kind of get a little bit of all of them. Um, Mira, Super sweet Mira, when we shot on Monday, brought me a birthday gift from her garden. <laughs> it is awesome. You brought me a bunch of collards and parsley and rosemary, and it is so good. It was the sweetest gift. Aww. It was the sweetest <laughs> gift. I was so touched and so moved. Uh, but Brian, that is a great question. What's your favorite leafy green? Ooh, um... I really like chard, but that's also because it grows really well here in Texas. I have several plants that have been able to weather the heat and the cold that we've had here. So awesome. um, I probably have about 10 plants, which is why I gave Karina such a huge bag of them. <laughs> um, but I feel like you can do so many different things with them. Like I'll throw them in with my eggs in the morning and kind of cook them up to add some veggies. You can eat it raw in a salad and I'll chop up like some nuts and dried fruit to add to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Put a little like balsamic balsamic vinaigrette on top. I don't know. I just feel like it's such a diverse kind of oh, yeah. easy middle of the road green that you can kind of toss in to get some more nutrients and, and stuff. So. And then you also get those really nice like super pink Swiss chards mm -hmm. variety sometimes, which I really like. <laughs> the rainbow <laughs> chard. Things, like, yeah, the rainbow chard. Super cool and colorful and beautiful. Uh, but really good question, Brian. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Oh, Harmonious Funk. Anything about solving peanut allergies? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I can't remember if it was Dr. Eccles or Dr. Balanzi, but one of the allergy videos, he talks about that allergies, there's kind of a cumul cumulative thing. So there's all of these different potential allergens our body is exposed to. Uh, and at some point, it just kind of tips the scale. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we get oh, allergies and we get sick and we get this. Um, so, you know, of course, every person is going to be different. It might be worth it to see, well, if you really took a lot of the other allergens out of the diet, maybe the body would be able to handle the peanuts. Um, also, if you did a really good like probiotic regimen and really heal up the gut, get that digestive gut bacterial flora, you know, nice and healthy again, you might be able to handle uh, to handle peanuts or, you know, or these different foods that you can't handle so well. But there's also the fact that sometimes you're just freaking allergic to something and all you can do is, is not eat it. But there's so many good alternatives now. There's almond butter mm -hmm. and like hazelnut butter. There, so oh, yeah. I feel like there's a lot more alternatives than there used to be when we were kids. I mean, it was like standard peanut butter is all you got kind yeah. of thing. So um, if you and your family are really struggling to find some alternatives that work for you, I would say go to a natural health food store. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you have a grocery store that does carry this kind of stuff and ask if they have almond butter or um, they even make like walnut and cashew and mm -hmm. I mean, oh, cashew butter. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. So there's a lot of other products out there that you can kind of go to, you know, if you're looking to get that nice sort of like creamy PB&J or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know, and again, I think that Melissa had kind of directed you to uh, the the Valley Clinic in Arizona. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, working with a clinic who specializes in allergies and food chemical sensitivities and things like that is another is definitely another potential route there. Um, but I will just, you know, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but lots of the times if we really have a food allergy, there's not going to be a whole lot that we can do to resolve that. Uh, but definitely keep us posted because I would be interested to know if there, you know, if there was something. So the erotic master baker says, what can I do to cure my cold? Should I exercise while I have a cold and will I ever get better? Wow. Maybe our natural remedies <laughs> expert can, uh, can touch on that. <laughs> so it sounds like, and I'm sorry to hear that, that you've been struggling with the cold for a while. So it's one awful. of the things that I found when I was working my full-time job is that it was pretty high stress. And my immune system, because of the stress, was just really run down. I didn't sleep well. You know, I would wake up and always feel tired and not ready to kind of just start my day. Um, So one of the things that I would say is, yes, you can do really light to moderate exercise when you have a cold. And that just helps move the blood. It helps move the lymph. So that's a good thing to do. A little bit of walking yoga is fine just really anything that you don't feel like you're really just having to push yourself too much to do Mm -hmm. um the next thing is is you know really boosting and increasing your immunity so if you're sick you have to look and go back like why am i not getting better or why do i keep on getting sick and is there something that's precipitating it so if you have a high stress job maybe talking to your boss and i know this can be uncomfortable and seeing if there's some assignments that you can take off your plate or maybe ordering your work so that um, you have certain priorities that you are going to accomplish that week and everything else can kind of fall to the side and you don't need to worry about it. Um, cold stuff. I'm trying to think of some other stuff. I mean, there's great homeopathic remedies. Doing lemon and ginger. Hot teas are really good to help you know, warm up the body and get fluid in there. And then the ginger is really great for really ginger kind of helps the system flush. It creates Mm -hmm. a lot of heat in the body. And, um, (coughs) you think of a cold sometimes you can be feverish and stuff. So you're like, well, why would I want to make myself hotter? But it's really just like pushing, you know, the blood, it's getting it to move, getting the pores Mm -hmm. to open and kind of just like trying to detox the body. And the fever is your body fighting. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to squash the fever with a Tylenol or a fever reducer, you want to actually kind of help the fever because the fever is what's going in there and, and trying to kill whatever it is that's that's messing with you. Another thought is, is I also look at the environment too. So like when I have, or when I was having really bad allergies, sometimes not for me personally, but I know that my friends would have, that would lead to a sinus infection. You know, it's like this cascade of things of like, had really bad allergies, and then I got a sinus infection, and then I got a cold because the infection Mm. migrated down to my throat. You know, it's all these different little things. So if you can look back into that sequence and seeing where is this getting kicked off and how can I avoid that from happening, that's a great way to circumvent um, that Mm -hmm. whole cycle of stuff. But rest is going to be big for getting over colds. Um, decreasing your stress so your immune system can really get back up to speed. Um, the ginger tea, you can mm-hmm. also work with essential oils. Um, I'm trying to think of some good ones. So tea tree oil, antiviral, antibacterial, antiseptic. You can put a couple drops on a tissue and just smell it, you know, mm-hmm. a couple times a day. That'll kind of help instantly carry those molecules into the respiratory system and help start fighting off that infection. Um, yeah, eucalyptus. Mm-hmm. I really love eucalyptus. And you can even make a little like steam tent where you have like boiling water in a bowl and a towel. And you just kind of like put your, you know, put your head in the towel and make a little like steamy eucalyptus thing. Um, also a humidifier. I highly recommend uh, because once you're having a cold, and you're, you're losing a lot of moisture. You're losing a lot of mucus. And actually, those mucus membranes, they need to be moist. And and especially if we have our heaters running during the winter time, that's going to dry us out even more. Mm-hmm. So having a humidifier, I actually have an essential oil diffuser. So I'm diffusing tea tree and eucalyptus. Mm-hmm. And that really, 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 uh, you know, I feel like it saved my life when I was all 
you know, congested a little while ago. You know, I've got two videos on coal, on remedies for cold and flu. I have a, a face massage for congestion that Athena Jezik did, where she actually shows you how to do some lymphatic work on your mm -hmm. face to help uh, relieve congestion and stuff like that. So I just encourage you, if you put in cold um, as a search term on our channel, we've got lots and lots of videos that will hopefully be a really good resource for you. So Isa Pavlina had asked about tahini uh, and would it be a good substitute for peanut butter and almond butter? Um, I think taste wise, um, it's I don't, different. it's pretty different. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I would really, you know, tahini is what they use to flavor um, like hummus and stuff like that. So again, you wanna read the ingredients and hopefully it just contains sesame seeds and doesn't contain a bunch of other weird stuff as well. Um, you know, I, I don't, it depends on what you're, what you're gonna use it with, but again, I think flavor-wise, it maybe wouldn't necessarily substitute for almond or peanut butter. Um, almond butter is really, really good for you. I'm not sure why you wanna substitute it out. Um, almond butter is great. Again, she was mentioning all those other nut butters as well. Lots of health benefits there. And um, I'm gonna apologize, we're kind of speeding through these now, but I wanna try to get to as many of them as possible. Uh, Jack shit 49 um, probably honey would be the thing I would want to go onto a deserted island with uh, out of mm -hmm. those things you listed there I freaking love honey it's delicious and it has health benefits too um, let's see uh, phytoestrogens and flax seeds um, I don't know do you I would just say you're fine. You're going to have to eat a substantial amount of anything right. for it to really set off your hormone balance. Um, basically, estrogen cycles in to testosterone, cycles back. So um, you would have to consume just an obscene amount. So don't worry about it unless you already are struggling with some hormone issues. I would say it's not going to be an issue. I know that when soy, when people are learning about that, it you know does help produce, it's a phytoestrogen as well. Um, people were really wanting to avoid drinking soy milk and tofu and, you know, eating edamame and stuff like that. But unless you just eat it 24 seven, the amount of difference it's going to make in your body is probably negligible. Yeah, and I would just throw in that, you know, again, we got to think about the cumulative effect. So if you're eating lots of soy, you know, and another thing that's phytoest uh, can have this effect, uh, the phytoestrogens is, is the bisphenol A in the plastics mm -hmm. and the plastic water bottles. So this is where, you know, it's about rather than looking at like one food that's going to cause this huge issue, we really need to kind of look at our lives in general and, and assess, you know, well, yeah, because if you're if you have lots of plastics, you drink out of lots of water, plastic water bottles and, and aluminum cans, most of which are aligned with BPA um, and you drink tons of soy milk and you eat tons of flax seeds. Maybe now there's an issue, but any kind of hormonal issues can be kind of tested for and looked at. Dr. Balanzi does a lot of work looking at hormones. So if you are concerned in that respect, I would just recommend you kind of get with him. You can even have blood work done and have it sent to him and he can help you one-on-one -on -one through Skype or something like that. So if that's something you're concerned about, you know, you can encourage yourself to kind of test your hormone levels and take a look at them. Uh, but, but yeah, like Mira is saying, you know, unless you're eating huge amounts of all of these different things, you know, it's not going to be one thing that's going to you know, s s uh, unbalance your hormones, um, especially with flax seeds. I mean, there's just so many flax seeds you could eat. <laughs> so, um, so really good question there. Uh, multi hungry eyes asked what I'm drinking. Um, it's my Topo Chico from this morning. Now it's just refilled with regular water and I squeezed a lemon in it. So I'm drinking little cool lemon water here. <laughs> uh, nice detoxifying, alkalizing. We we're talking about that a little earlier on. Iona407 uh, is eating lots of dates bad for you. Um, dates are pretty high in sugar. Uh, they're pretty high on the glycemic index. If you're just popping dates by the handful, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of sugar. Um, and, you know, it's probably not going to be as good for you as eating a lower glycemic fruit, like um, an orange or uh, an apple or something like that. But um, 
at the same time, dates are a really good, you know, healthy kind of sweetener, so to speak. So if you're just having things that are sweetened with dates or you're using dates when you make granola or when you make muffins or, or something like that, it's really not going to be harmful. The only time I would say it's potentially harmful is if you're really just sitting there, you know, like eating them one after the other, popping them like pieces of candy. I will say that it's probably better to pop dates like candy than to pop actual candy <laughs> like candy but anytime you're sitting there with something really sweet just continually eating it it's gonna have some some potentially negative effects um harmonious funk i have not heard of tea tap exercises either. unfortunately maybe y'all can um clue me in there <laughs> ms robertson what's your take on meat alternatives like tofu grounds so again i kind of talked about this earlier that somebody had a question about textured vegetable protein Again, apply these same kind of philosophy that I apply to everything. Look for minimally processed, look for a short ingredient list. Most of these fake meat things like the, uh, what is that one brand uh, that has the veggie burgers? Um, I want to say like Nature's Way or something. I don't, yeah, there, I, can't, I can't remember, but it's some burgers. healthy sounding name. They mm -hmm. have these veggie burgers. They're really horrific. You turn it over and it's just chemical goop who knows what so even if it's vegetarian if it's highly processed and has a bunch of chemicals in it it's not good for you so the best thing to substitute meat with is a vegetable just eat more vegetables and vegetables do contain protein and if you're concerned about that check out my top 10 protein sources video um again in terms of uh meat type substitutes tempeh is going to be is going to be better than tofu so tempeh is fermented tofu um has lots and lots of health benefits again you want to read the ingredients but for the most part there's not a lot of you know conventional tempeh out there that's got really horrible ingredients in it so uh just be wary you know glance at that ingredient label you don't have to stand there and read the entire thing just a glance is going to tell you how processed and how chemical cocktail-esque uh, that that food is. So a uh, really good question there, Ms. Robertson. Uh, Isa Pavlina, what would be the healthiest replacement for cow milk? Almond, rice, grain, or soy? Um, I would go with almond. Almonds have a lot of healthy fats. They have minerals. Uh, when we're talking about rice, there is some brown rice milk uh, that is going to be better than white rice milk because it'll have a little bit more fiber. Uh, Soy I would avoid, especially if it's not organic, because most of the soy is genetically modified. Um, I have seen some of these grain milks. Again, guys, just you know, read the ingredients. And really the best thing is going to be if you actually soak almonds, blend them up yourself, and then press it out to make your own almond milk with it. And then you really don't have any ingredient other than almonds and water. Yeah, if you look at the labels for almond milk, soy milk, they also make mm -hmm. a hemp milk. There's, not only is there a lot of ingredients, but there's quite a bit of sugar, so they sweeten it, so it kind of has that sweetish taste that, you know, cow's milk has. Mm -hmm. um, so just be careful, because when you pour that over, you know, if you pour almond milk and it's, you know, sweetened or original, sometimes what they call it, then right. you just added tons of sugar to your diet in the morning, and I just don't think it's a good replacement really right okay uh, mr. just DIY lots of oranges are they bad for you oranges are great for you you just want to be eating the whole orange so you get all of the benefits of that whole entire food that whole entire piece of fruit um, it's always gonna be good to vary up your diet realize that every different fruit has different health benefits to offer uh, so it probably won't hurt you to eat oranges every day but it would benefit you to incorporate some other fruits into your diet as well uh, but anybody who is eating fruit every every day is, is definitely doing something good for their health. Um, always a step in the right direction. Hazelnuts, hazelnuts are, are, are healthy, have health benefits. Just be wary of these different kind of hazelnut products. You gotta read those ingredients because sometimes they'll add corn syrup solids or and high fructose corn syrup and all kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, I like. I guess the Nutella would probably be the most iconic yeah. hazelnut thing, right? Unfortunately, Nutella 
Uh, while it is very, very, very delicious, um, probably not as bad for you as some things, uh, certainly not as good for you as just easy eating hazelnuts, for instance. They actually have, and I just ate it today because I had a little snack before I came in here, I had an apple, and I think it's Justin's makes these little packets oh, yeah. of um, hazelnut. It's actually a chocolate hazelnut. They mix almonds and hazelnuts and then cacao powder. I think it does have a little bit of a sweetener in it, but um, it was a nice little afternoon treat. I just sliced up almonds and then, I mean, uh, my apple and then dipped it into that. So there's mm. definitely some like more natural brands of stuff like Nutella out there yeah, that are better. Sure. I think it had like four ingredients. So just keep on searching. <laughs> if you're not in a big city, you can find good stuff online too. Yeah, definitely guys. I mean, there is with the internet now, I mean, you can order anything so um yeah oh so i will go ahead uh, we're a little bit over time now so we're gonna be uh signing off in just a second but i do need to announce the winner so our winner on the raw chocolate giveaway so this is another really good reason to make sure you like our facebook page and follow us on the facebook because we're doing these giveaways and we're actually going to have different giveaways uh for each of the social media so uh, keep an eye out for those. It's another reason to put us in your Google Plus circle so that you don't miss out on these contests. We're not probably going to be promoting them um, in the videos. We may include a couple annotations or something like that, but really you need to be in our Google Plus circle or us in yours or however the you know semantics of that work uh, in order to see those things. So I'm happy to announce that Charlie Wallace is the winner Aww. of the raw chocolate. We put numbers in a little bag and then pulled out a number and picked the comment that corresponded with that number. And Charlie Wallace is the winner, which is freaking awesome because he's our buddy. Um, <laughs> Charlie actually came to my little birthday gig that I did on Sunday, which was so very sweet. So sweet to see him. Um, so because of the lag here, we're not quite seeing the comments, but hopefully Charlie, you're still here and you are happy to know that you just won all of that raw chocolate. So uh, I actually sent you a message earlier on Facebook to start coordinating with you and get your address and all that kind of stuff so we can ship them to you. Uh, more contests coming soon. And guys, let us know what kind of stuff we should give away. So, I mean, raw chocolate is probably a great thing, but if you have <laughs> other ideas, we've talked about um, Psyche Truth getting like Psyche Truth water bottles, uh, making Psyche Truth t-shirts or something like that. Is that something you'd be interested in? Let us know if you have ideas of things you'd like to win. You just might win them. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive, right? Um, so let's see, uh, man, there's so, so many, many good more questions. questions. I know. Oh, pickles, Sandman X187. This is a good one. Pickles, oh, so delicious. Again, not all pickles are created equally. So when we talk about the kind of conventional Vlasic pickles or those ones that come in a big, huge jar and they're like neon green. Those mm -hmm. probably aren't very good for you. They probably don't really have very good ingredients. But a cucumber, which has been fermented in vinegar or something, or, or I guess it's that's what they use, right? Or mm -hmm. some kind Vinegar. of um, yeah. some salt or something like that um, are super beneficial. So when we talk about these fermented foods like pickles, sauerkraut, yogurt, the fermented tofu, which is tempeh that I've now mentioned a couple times in this live chat, all of those fermented foods are really good and healthy. They are probiotic, which means they help to feed the good healthy bacteria in your gut. Um, and they have just all kinds of different health benefits. These are ancient cultured foods that's been around for a long, long time. Um, there's a brand called Bubby's uh, that makes pickles that, oh my God, they're the best pickles <laughs> in the world. Uh, but it's a really good example of a good high quality product, really minimal ingredient list. Um, but yeah, if you can find good high quality pickles or actually pickle some cucumbers yourself. There's tons of videos and resources online teaching you how to make your own pickles. Uh, but man, pickles are a great, great thing. Pickled beets is another thing mm -hmm. that I really, really love. But yes, tons of health benefits there. You just need to kind of glance at that ingredient list and make sure you're getting a high quality uh, product. Um, so I'd probably... Yeah, I think that we are probably going to sign off. Oh, somebody asked how long it's taken you. You've been yeah. growing up oh, your gosh. hair. <laughs> 
Um, I cut it really short in 2007, so seven years. <laughs> wow, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, all right, you guys, so we're going to go ahead. Um, oh my gosh, 251 new comments. Oh wow. You know what, Mira, if you wanna go, you can you can okay. go ahead. I know that you have yeah. other, things, <laughs> other things to get to, but I'm gonna stay here and try to get through a couple more of these. <laughs> but everybody give Mira a big hand here. We're so Bye happy guys. to have her. Thank um, you. <laughs> she has a work engagement to get to, so we're gonna let her go. But I will stay here and get to a couple more of these questions here. Perfect, y'all have so, a beautiful night. Thank Mira, you. thank you thank so you, much for coming, honey. <laughs> Oh, and Mikey was thrilled with y'all's videos. Oh, good. So we will definitely be posting them soon and then scheduling with you again soon, too. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thank you, babe. All right, guys. Okay, so thank you for sticking around, y'all. It's 10 after 6, but I really want to get to just a couple more of these. So let me see if I can even get them in here. So somebody asked how to... Um, how to start a regular yoga or exercise program um, start super duper small like five minutes a day and maybe you just do it once a week to start out with okay five minutes a week I'm gonna dedicate to this so you're picking this goal that seems really simple like can you spare five minutes a week you can probably spare five minutes a week right uh, the simpler it is the more likely you're gonna be to do it so start with something small like five minutes per week. Once, once a week, you're gonna spend five minutes and then just slowly add on from there. Maybe you go from five to 10 minutes. Maybe you just go from five to six minutes. Or maybe you just go from five minutes once a week to five minutes twice a week. So now you're doing 10 minutes a week. Start super small and the more that you, you know, the hardest part is just starting is just sitting down for the first time and saying, I'm gonna watch a yoga workout, or I'm gonna follow along with this Jen Hillman workout, or whatever it is. Um, but once you get past that very first step, it gets easier and easier and easier and easier and easier. So that first step is the hardest one though. Once you can get past it, it gets a lot easier. And then also, once you start incorporating just your five minutes a week, you're also going to start becoming aware of the benefits. And once you start becoming aware of the benefits and saying, wow, I actually do feel better after doing that, or I actually do feel less stressed out, well, now suddenly you have created an incentive for yourself to do it. So, you know, just that very first time is the hardest one. And that's why I tell people, pick something super simple, like five minutes a week. Maybe you just do one minute a day. Whatever it is, you just have to start somewhere and start small. Because if you give yourself this, okay, I gotta start exercising for at least one hour a day, three days a week, guess what? You're not gonna make it past maybe the second week. And I'm just talking now from personal experience because I freaking know that, you know, if I try to tell myself, okay, I gotta set aside an hour a day, I just won't do it. Cause I, and then I won't do anything because I feel like, oh, if I can't do the hour, it's not worth it. But if I tell myself, you know what? Five minutes a day or five minutes a week, it seems so easy that sometimes I'll actually maybe do more than five minutes. And then at some point you can start easing up from there. And before you know it, you're doing five minutes a day every day of the week, or maybe you're doing 30 minutes a week. And that's huge, huge, huge step in the right direction. So great question there um, because my comments are moving so quickly I can't I don't remember whose question that was um, but that was a really good question so let's see ooh broccoli soup I want broccoli soup okay how can I get rid of the guilt and depression I get after wolfing down ice cream wheel man Stan such a good question and this is something that I encounter a lot um, with my health coaching clients because one of the biggest problems is you know inevitably we all splurge sometimes we all make maybe less than perfect decisions sometime myself included this is just life this is just what happens um, and the thing that I tell my clients and that I've done for myself but pretty much any advice that I ever give anybody is just something that I tried myself <laughs> so um so what worked for me is to just make a habit of catching myself 
every time I'm guilting myself and going, oh, I really shouldn't have eaten that. I mean, it was just my birthday this weekend, guys. So you can imagine, I've been I've been eating pretty badly, okay? I've been splurging. I've been eating cake, like, every day. Um, and just catch myself when I'm guilting myself. And start making a habit of just stopping. You just don't think about the past at all. And when you catch yourself thinking about the past, you just make this quick little flip over to thinking about the future instead. So instead of thinking about, I ate a piece of chocolate pie, something or other uh, for breakfast this morning uh, that one of my coworkers brought me, it was very sweet. Um, so I ate that for breakfast and then, you know, I could sit here and all day I could be like, oh my God, I can't believe I ate it for breakfast. But what I've done instead is every single time that I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. I just say, you know what? I'm gonna think forward to tonight and what am I gonna do tonight? So just like Melissa's doing here in the live chat, talking about what she's making for dinner, rather than giving herself a hard time for, you know, she had a bite of my cake with me this morning. No, I'm kidding. She should, <laughs> but you know, the whole idea is that you think about the future. So take yourself out of the past and put yourself in the future and think about the good things that you are gonna do. So maybe it's meal planning, maybe it's, you know, thinking about a grocery list. I actually have to go to the grocery store tonight. So one of the things I can be thinking about is, okay, well, I need some lemons, I need some garlic, I wanna grab some onions. Um, and the more that you just keep your mind on the future, not only are you gonna be making healthier choices because now you've planned a little bit on your new healthier meals, um, but just in general, it starts creating and cultivating this compassion for ourselves. So rather than judging ourselves and living in the past, we're gonna focus on our future and all the things that we're gonna do and just use, you know, if you're feeling really bad about, you know, what you've been eating or whatever, use that to propel you into making better choices the next time you have that choice. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, let me know what y'all think. Is that good advice? Is that bad advice? Um, it's really, really worked well for me. And I'm at the point now where I just don't guilt myself at all. I just don't do it. There's no point, you know? Um, nothing is gained from guilting ourselves about something in the past. And that goes for food choices, that goes for relationships, that, that goes for pretty much everything, right? There's just nothing to gain from beating yourself up over the past. So put yourself in the future, um, you know, fo focus on the things that you can change, focus on the things that you can do. Uh, and guys, let me know if you think that's a good, if that's good helpful advice or if I'm just talking out my bleep, who knows. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Pete West says, my favorite stretch is to lay on the floor with my legs up straight against the wall. Um, yes, that's an awesome little yoga pose called legs up the wall. It looks a little something like this, right? <laughs> Um, but putting your legs straight up a wall, not only is it super easy to do, um, it helps circulation. So if we're standing all day, gravity is really pulling stuff down to our feet. So putting our legs up the wall helps to kind of counteract gravity a little bit and improve circulation in your whole leg. Um, it's great for releasing pressure off of your, uh, you know, sciatic area right there, you know, the top of your hips and everything. You've got a lot of nerve endings up there. So taking that pressure off the low back by lifting the legs up, super awesome. Um, Courtney did a video uh, doing legs up the wall that'll be coming out soon. And it's a great, great thing. Even if you just, uh, you know, have a couch or something um, and, and kind of lay on the floor and then put your legs up on the couch, that works too. Um, I really like it when they're really fully up against the wall, completely straight, uh, but this may be a little much for some people. So maybe you wanna start with your knees bent up over the sofa. So you get that you're laying like this, here's your head and here's your feet on the sofa. Um, but yeah, Pete, that's a great, great stretch. Great thing to do. Um, Okie dokie, let's see. Psyche Truth water bottles. Okay, cool. All right, we'll put that in the works. Um, 
Congrats to Charlie. There we go. All right, let's see. Oh, how do you find the time for food preparation? This is a really good question, Kelly. Um, this is this is something that I still struggle with. You know, if I could make more time for more food prep, um, I would be eating a lot healthier. You know, I've got a lot of veggies in my fridge right now, and I'm kind of going, okay, when am I going to have time to make all of these? So here are some good couple of little tips for helping with food preparation. Uh, one of the things that I like the best is to kind of double team with my time. So while I'm preparing vegetables, I'm actually like try to keep my core engaged, try to keep my core, and you can just, just while you're sitting there, I could do it the whole time in the live chat. Um, just activate your core muscles, keep them firm, keep them strong. If you're creating a little workout there. I'd like to do these little calf raises. I'm really obsessed with calf raises, um, <laughs> uh, which is just where you just kind of releve, as they say in ballet, just going up on your toes and back. Um, Donnie did a great little video where um, she's showing these little like exercises where you just kind of like take one leg out and then take it back and then take it to the side. Um, those are really great, super easy, and you can do them while you're doing other stuff. So I try to say, okay, I'm gonna take you know, this 30 minutes of workout time that I wanted to do, and I'm just gonna work out while I'm preparing food or while I'm brushing my teeth is another good time that I like to do these things. Uh, another tip is to, um, you know, maximize the amount of food that you produce. So when I am gonna take the time to make dinner and make food and do this, I try to wash as many vegetables as I can at one time, prepare as much stuff as I can at one time. Um, and then while I'm in that mode of having my cutting board out and all of this stuff, you know, go ahead and pack myself a couple little snack bags of vegetables, of, you know, carrots or celery or whatever. Um, so it's kind of like once you've made the time and you're in the kitchen and you're doing it, go ahead and get as much stuff done as you can. So if I cook soup, we were talking about soup earlier. Well, I'm gonna try to make as much soup as I can fit in the pot so that I can have another more couple days of soup. Um, kind of stretch out that one cooking episode to last me a couple of different meals. Um, Another tip is is getting your family to help you. You know, a lot of times there is plenty that your boyfriend or your husband or your kids um, can help you with. So things like emptying the dishwasher. I remember emptying the dishwasher for my mom all the time as a kid. That's super easy. Doesn't take, you know, because sometimes with some things, well, how are you going to teach him to do this or teach him to do that? So pick out those really simple things like taking out the trash or loading the dishwasher, emptying the dishwasher, um, rinsing vegetables. So I'll usually, I have a big, um, well, it's not that big. <laughs> I have a metal bowl uh, and I'll fill it up with filtered water. Um, and then that would be a really easy thing for kids to do, right? Is just swish around the broccoli in there, rinse off the broccoli, um, you know, and so you've created a little job for them or something. Um, I think I'm actually gonna make a whole video about cool things that kids can do to help in the kitchen. Um, Mike is not super excited about this video idea, so I don't know how soon that video is gonna come out, but it is something that I have in the works. Um, you can always message me um, if you want some of those ideas sooner, and I will kind of give you a sneak peek as, what to, as, as to what I plan to include in that video. Um, but you know, get other people around the, you know, around the house to help you, or find a friend who maybe wants to come over and help you, um, and y'all can make dinner together. You know, a lot of times people complain that like, oh, it's really you know hard to cook for one, I don't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. You know, there are hundreds and hundreds of people dealing with that exact same problem. So using, uh, you know, something like meetup.com is a good way to find groups of people who potluck or do something like that. But even if you just sent an email out to all your coworkers, chances are you have another single coworker who would be happy to, hey, yeah, let's go in together and make a meal together or let's potluck. And then each person just makes one thing and you come together. Um, 
and, and you have a whole meal. So find ways to, to get other people involved. Make it fun. You know, one of the hardest things about food preparation is that it feels like, oh, it's so boring and it's so horrible and I don't want to do it. But if you can find ways to make it fun and make it social, then it becomes less of a maybe like dreaded chore and becomes something that, you know, you might even really look forward to. I really find chopping vegetables and cooking to be kind of a zen, stress relieving experience. Um, So, you know, I have talked about that in the stress relief tips video. Um, if you're interested in hearing more about that, but just, um, you know, think about ways to, to make it more fun and to get more out of it so that you don't feel so much like, oh, it's just this boring chore or whatever, something like that. Uh, so good question. That was Kelly T. I've never put avocado or honey in my hair. I think honey in the hair would be a little rough. Um, I did when I was researching earlier about apple cider vinegar. It said that there's this really cool rinse you can do with apple cider vinegar that will actually help to moisturize the hair, cleans the scalp. Um, The only food type thing I've ever put in my hair, I've actually done egg yolks. Wait, no, have I done? Wait, no. What did I, I'm like, what did I do with the egg yolks? That was years ago. I feel bad. I can't remember. Um, coconut oil. I've done coconut oil masks on my hair before. Um, that is pretty amazing, actually. Um, it's a little rough to maybe leave coconut oil in your hair just for your day-to-day thing. It can make it kind of greasy. But leaving it on for 20 minutes or so, even if you like wrap a warm towel around your hair. Um, and what I actually did is I wrapped my head in plastic, and then I wrapped a red, uh, you know, just this part of my head, not my face, (laughs) wrap uh, plastic around my hair and then put a warm towel around it with the coconut oil. And then when I rinsed it out, I was like, whoa, I have completely new hair. Um, So it's a really cool question there. Uh, Definitely if there's anybody in the chat room who has a, who has something on that, you can let us know. Coconut milk, Melissa, thank you for mentioning that. I totally forgot. Uh, to mention coconut milk as another good potential, you know, cow milk alternative. Um, Novel Blue, how bad is it to eat the same vegetables every day? I eat lots of romaine lettuce, red cabbage, carrots, onion, broccoli, and the small red potatoes. Um, So I would think of it maybe not in terms of how bad it is. Um, Eating any vegetable every day is going to be really good for you. It's really not going to hurt you to eat the same vegetables every day. Just realize that it would be healthier to incorporate more variety of vegetables into your diet and get a good variety of things because all the different veggies offer different benefits. Um, So I, I wouldn't say that it's bad to eat the same vegetables every day. I would just say that it's better to have some variety and to kind of mix it up here and there. So let me know if that answers your question. Um... A good question from somebody whose name is in Arabic, so I don't know what your name is. If you want to leave your name for me, I would love to know how to pronounce your name. Um, I think Arabic is a beautiful, beautiful language. Uh, But anyways, your question is, um, I'm a college student. I leave from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. I find it hard not to order takeaway. Um, Can you please do some videos? So yes, I will definitely do some videos on that. I actually just shot a video last week uh, that's healthy snacks. So that first one that went up, I'm going through the bad snacks, (laughs) the salty snacks. Then there's another one where I go through the sweet snacks. And then the third video is where I actually show you my ideas for healthy snacks. So keep an eye out for that video. Um, You know, of course, fresh foods are always going to be better, but canned foods uh, are going to be better than processed foods or restaurant food or something. So a great tip is to get, you know, a can of black beans, a can of chickpeas, a can of corn, um, you know, and, and mix those things together in a little salad. I When I did it, I did it with a little cilantro and avocado, and it was so freaking good. And that was like a super easy snack. It took me like three seconds. All you gotta do is like open a couple cans, dump them in, squeeze in the avocado, and boom, you have a really nice, super healthy, quick, easy snack. So again, it's gonna be better if you actually have the fresh chickpeas, fresh black beans that you actually soak and cook yourself. Um, but 
man, anything is better than getting takeout from a fast food restaurant or really any restaurant at all. So if canned foods are maybe the stepping stone that we get to improving our health, uh, that's great. And especially if you're a college student, I understand you probably don't have a big refrigerator, <laughs> you, know, you probably don't have a stove. Uh, so those canned foods can be really, really good. And again, just stay away from those canned soups and things with a really long ingredient list. Um, but those things that's like, okay, here's a can of corn or a can of green beans or a can of black beans, um, those are gonna generally be pretty healthy things and they're not gonna have a huge amount of ingredients, especially if you turn it over and really just glance at that ingredient level. Okay. Doki guys, I want to thank all of you for being here. Um, so many wonderful, wonderful people in the house today. Um, I can't thank you guys enough. Please, pretty please go to psychetruth.net, join our email list, uh, circle us on the Google Plus, like our Facebook page, all that good stuff. Those are the best ways to make sure that you can enter into our future contests where we'll be giving away all kinds of cool prizes based on y'all's comments and requests. And um, man, I'm just thrilled to spend another live chat with you guys. Thank you all so very much for being here. I'm gonna sing you out with this little live chat theme song here. But first, hold on, let's see how many people have liked our video. Okay, we have got, we went from 11 to 57, so thank you. <laughs> uh, so thank you everybody who uh, liked our video today. Real quick, let's see, Jackship49, how many different supplements do I personally take on a daily basis? None. I have some supplements around. There is nothing that I'm really, really, really good at taking every single, single day, uh, except for water. Water. I drink every single day without fail a good amount of water. Um, but it's also because I eat a lot of vegetables. I eat a lot of fruit. I eat a lot of things that give me different benefits and different nutrients. Um, so, uh, you know, if I was gonna pick like a top couple supplements, um, minerals would maybe be number one, or maybe just start using a sea salt or something like that, which would uh, give you some minerals, more minerals than you find in regular salt. Um, Omega-3s uh, of some kind, so maybe it's fish oil or something like that. Omega-3 supplement is gonna be a really good step in the right direction. Um, B vitamins are also really good as well. Um, in terms of what supplements do I have that I try to take regularly, um, I've got vitamin C, I have a B complex. Um, I try to I try to get my health through food rather than through supplements, honestly. And then there was another question about arthritis. Um, know that any condition that ends with itis, so colitis, arthritis, etc., those are inflammatory conditions. That's what the itis at the ends means. It means it's an inflammatory condition. So anything in the anti-inflammatory diet. Well, what's that, Karina? You won't believe how simple it is. Stay away from processed foods. So stay away from refined sugar, refined flour, anything with a long chemically ingredient list. Eat vegetables. Eat um, fish is really good. Got lots of good healthy omega-3s in fish. Um, eat things without ingredient lists. If you have any kind of inflammatory condition, getting off the sugar is probably like the number one thing. Um, and getting off the processed foods. This is the main way to get rid of inflammation in the body. All right, guys, don't forget to check out Dr. Balanzi's live chat tomorrow at 5 p.m. My live chat is every single Wednesday at 5 p.m. So definitely come back and visit with me again next week. Uh, Melissa Lemunyan, who's here in the chat chatting with you guys, she has a live chat every Tuesday at 6.30. Um, all of these are central time. So uh, definitely, definitely come back for more live chats. We hope you guys had a good time. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. I even got nine more likes in the last couple of minutes, which was just totally awesome. So thanks. 
I love all of you guys. My first live chat as a 29 year old. I know, it's kind of sad. Um, so thank you to all of those who guessed that I was like 25. Screw you to whoever guessed that I was 33. <laughs> Uh, not that 33 is old, but I'm very happy that I'm not quite 30 yet. I have a little bit longer, or at least a year longer, uh, being 29. So thank you all. Thank you all so much for the birthday wishes. Y'all are so incredibly sweet. I can't thank you enough. Okay, so Harmonious Funk says, I wish you had a t-shirt to purchase. Psyche Truth, the t-shirt. And we have thought a million times about this, but what should we put on our t-shirt? Let us know. Maybe that'll be the next Facebook contest. What do you put on a Psyche Truth t-shirt? We were thinking, I thought it would be funny if it said body by Psyche Truth. I don't know. Maybe that's silly. Tell me what y'all think. Um, I think we have a whole video that kind of bashes the China study, unfortunately. Um, I mean, yeah, people who promote a vegetarian diet are gonna have a lot of bad things to say about fish and, and animal products. Um, I just will stick to my guns in saying that uh, <clears throat> processed foods are what's wrong. Processed grains, processed wheat, processed sugar is the problem. Um, all right. 80,000 time trying to do the live chat theme song. I just have to stop looking at the comments or I'll have to answer another question. It's time for a live chat. Ooh, the psyche truth live chat. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Every Wednesday. 5 p.m. Central Standard Time on your YouTube machine. Live chat, live chat, live chat, live chat. It's the Psyche Truth. Live chat, live chat, live chat, live chat. It's the Psyche Truth. Live chat. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you for the t-shirt ideas. We love you guys. We will definitely see you again soon. Thank you so much for being here. I just got to figure out. Here we go. Thank you. Mwah. Tapping is a simple and powerful healing modality.